Hi, my name's Jeff. I'm a vocational rehabilitation specialist. I've worked for over 20 years in research around people with severe mental illness and their vocational rehabilitation. This talk is about why people with severe mental illness should be encouraged to develop employment goals and not be left uh, thinking that they can't work after you know, they've been diagnosed with a severe mental illness. This is very important because most people with severe forms of mental illness are actually interested in employment. They don't lose that. And this is a normal part of society. It's really important that everybody in society has the same equal rights and equal opportunities. And employment is key to all of that. If we take away employment from a person, especially a young person, that sentences them to a lifetime of being in poverty, a lifetime of having less opportunities than everybody else, um, an inability to form relationships because of their, um, their employment status, an inability to buy a house, an inability to even buy a car, have a normal life of any sort. So employment is a key uh, to participation, it's a key to being an equal citizen, it's a key to being a fully fledged member of a community or a society. So to take away that right to employment is a really potentially damaging thing to do. And nobody intends to do that, but this can kind of happen after a person has a severe mental illness because they think that nobody wants them, they think that they can't work again, and sometimes this message is reinforced by their treatment team or by a hospital or by even their, their GP. This is less common these days, fortunately, but 10 or 20 years ago when I first started studying in this field, it was not uncommon for um, psychiatrists and whole teams of uh, mental health um, professionals to say that, oh, sorry, you've, you've diagnosed with schizophrenia, you can't work now. Now, fortunately, that uh, you know, message doesn't get out there that often now, but it can be around. Um, and it's really important for people and their families to know that a lot of help is available if a person does have a goal of returning to work. Nobody should be forced to either when they're not ready, but at the same time, the help is there for those that uh, want to seek out you know, some assistance in order to get back to the career of their choice. And that's a key thing, it should be their choice. It's just that after a mental illness, some jobs are more challenging than others. You know, and some jobs uh, have more discrimination and stigma associated with mental illness than others do. And you might be surprised about what those industries are and where those jobs are, but given those difficulties, there's still lots of industries and lots of jobs where you know, anybody with any kind of health condition can work, as long as the work is matched to you know, what their strengths and their, their abilities are at that point in time. We've learned over the, over the last uh, decade or so that the best form of assistance is called individual placement and support. And this has been developed in the USA for people in the USA mental health system who had very severe and often comorbid um, mental health and addiction uh, and substance use conditions um, who nobody at the time thought could ever work again. But with individual one-on-one um, -on -one assistance through the individual placement and support program, um, people were able to find good jobs, paying jobs, that were able to help give them a sense of um, participation and citizenship and, you know, it, that accelerates recovery because work validates their wellness and it also validates their uh, utility to the community. So they feel valued, they get paid for it, just like anybody else. And that is gold. You know, I've seen people work not only full-time jobs but long hours as well and manage their illness. So not everybody's uh, able to do that. For the vast majority of people that we come across with severe mental illness that want to work will typically work around 15 to 20 hours a week. But that can make a huge difference to their lifestyle and make a huge difference to their self-esteem and that's a key thing. So the message here is that the right help is available out there in a lot of places in Australia, not everywhere, but in a lot of places, um, you know, for people who are recovering from an episode of severe mental illness. And it's about getting the timing of that right. It's about matching that with where they are in their recovery journey and their goals and interests in employment. Because it's not easy going back to work. It's not easy going back to work maybe on the days you're not feeling so well, but it's going to be a lot easier when you are feeling well and energetic, just like it is for anybody else. So, in a sense, you know, the work role is typically, you know, it's work because we have to keep at it. It's work because we have responsibilities, we have to turn up, we have to do stuff. We can't just decide, oh, 
I'm not feeling that hot today. I think I'll stay on the couch. No, no employers are, um, are able to cope with that. They too have got stuff they've got to do and they rely on their workforce. So we have to be uh, you know, an important part of that. But not to have that is worse. So I've never seen anybody with a mental illness that benefits from also being unemployed. You know, unemployment is always worse than working. Working despite its challenges um, is usually better. But, you know, like all of us, going through the workforce is, you know, the major sort of activity of our adult life. It's about which workforce, it's about which people we work with, it's about having an optimal setting so that our strengths are supported and utilised and we feel the best about what we're doing and why we're doing it. That is, you know, key to having a working life and that's key to building a career of your choice. That's where we want to go with everybody with mental illness. Thank you.